This Illinois town remains the site of one of the country's most heinous murder scenes. 29 years ago tomorrow, a killer murdered the Dardeen family in cold blood. The killings rocked the tiny town of Ina, Illinois, which is about 90 miles southeast of St. Louis, and the murders looming over the town remain unsolved to this day. It was odd. We'd usually end up talking about murders. <laughs> I know you might think that's crazy, but me and him was into reading about a lot of murder cases, you know, and things happening to people. Russell and Ruby Dardeen had just moved to town a year earlier and owned a mobile home on the outskirts of Ina, Illinois. They went by their middle names, Keith and Elaine. They had a three-year-old son, Peter. Keith worked at the local water treatment plant, Elaine at a supply store. The couple was actively involved in their tiny Baptist church, Keith the lead singer, and Elaine playing the piano. Elaine was seven months pregnant with a little girl who would be named Casey. But Keith had concerns as the area grew more violent. He told his family that he wanted to move and he put the trailer up for sale. He said there's just too many things happening down here. Strange in such a small town, there's only one stoplight in Ina. It was a quiet town that nobody really noticed. Until November 17th, 1987, Keith failed to show up for his night shift and nobody could reach his family. Police eventually went to the trailer. What they found was indescribable. Elaine was sexually mutilated and bludgeoned to death with a baseball bat. So was her son, Peter. Baby Casey, due in two months, arrived during the beatings. She too was beaten to death. There was no forced entry, nothing was missing. Cash and jewelry were laying in the open. There was no sign of Keith or the family car. From where we are here on the road, uh, there was a, uh, their trailer was a little further back from the road here, kind of close to where the outbuilding is now. There was a manhunt for Keith. A day later, hunters found his body in a wheat field a mile from the family home. He was also sexually mutilated and shot three times in the face. The family car was found 10 miles south, splattered with blood. Incredibly, it was parked right in front of the Benton Police Department. Next door, the Franklin County Courthouse. I was the best man at their wedding. And to find out a few years later, they'd been so brutally murdered. And yet to find out that we're not any closer to really solving this than we were after it happened, it's very disheartening. More than 20 thick binders labeled Dardeen exist in the case, which now rests in the lap of Captain Bobby Wallace. He is the fourth person to take a crack at the case. He's heard all the theories. Be, um, from what I've seen of uh, something that serious, I would think of one of two things would come to mind just personally, would either A, sending a, a clear message to somebody, or it was extremely personal. One can imagine what this did to the tiny town of Ina. At Bonnie's Cafe, it is still the talk of the town. A lot of people talked about it, but they didn't know what they were talking about. They just knew it happened, but they didn't know why, or, and they still don't know why. They never will. Jefferson County, Illinois officials have shared their files with the FBI cold case unit. And yet, not even a suspect. Then, 13 years after the crime, Tommy Lynn Sells fell into their lap. Or did he? Sells was sitting on death row in Texas when he started claiming he had killed up to 70 people nationwide. But what about the Dardines? Sells, who lived in St. Louis much of his life, said yes, he did the Ina killing. But when Jefferson County officials went and pressed him for specifics, Sells got them wrong, except for one strange thing. He says there were watermelon ceramics in the Dardine trailer, 
Bill Clutter of Investigative Innocence was among those interviewing cells. For him to know that, he had to have been inside that house. Yeah, I'm convinced he, he is the, the Dardeen killer. But Jefferson County officials did not feel they had enough to charge cells, who was executed in 2014. But if he was an Ina and did kill the Dardines, why? Remember the Dardine car parked at the police department and courthouse miles from the crime scene? Federal prosecutors had recently concluded a large drug conspiracy trial there. Clutter says Sells told him that someone connected Keith Dardine, a church-going singer who worked at the town's water treatment plant and lived in a trailer, to that drug conspiracy trial. And that someone brought Sells to Ina. Sells told me that those victims were targeted, that if they had searched the woods near the trailer, they would have found a, a pile of beer cans where he had waited and watched. And I believe he uh, went into the trailer uh, and took control of Ruby and the three-year-old son, duct taped their hands, and waited for Keith to come home. Not everyone believes Sells is the killer. Among them is Joanne Dardeen, who will be 84 soon. She hopes and prays she will live long enough to find real closure. I believe somebody wanted him to do something, and I believe that he flat out refused, and, uh, well, we'll show you. You do it our way or no way. Police call Tommy Lynn Sells a suspect in the Dardeen murders. There are no other known suspects in this case.